Hi everybody, Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios here and this is the Victory VX100 Super Kraken. Let's check it out. So everything that you just heard there was the Victory Super Kraken uh, with the noise gate in the effects loop. This Tube Screamer was never even on. I had it there but didn't need it. And it's feeding out into my live room into a Victory 4x12 with Vintage 30. So it's essentially the Kraken cab. Uh, so you're not going to get much more of a Kraken sound than this. Uh, it's an incredibly versatile amp as well. I'm gonna grab one of my trusty guitars. This is the heavier of the two that I used in the demo. This is my, if I can find a pick. If, oh boy, doesn't take long to disappear picks. This guitar can do a lot. Let's start with this on the clean channel with the effects loop off. Everything's on switches, by the way, but these are very clever switches. So let's start in the clean sound. Maybe let's use a guitar that's a little more normal for this. Here's my strap with a couple of medium output humbuckers on it, which I can coil tap. So, this. Nice clean sound. I can get a little bit of gain out of it by putting it in humbucker mode to turn the gain up a little bit. Which makes the clean channel very versatile indeed. I can also turn this from a clean channel into a crunch channel, which is more like the original Kraken. So it starts with some gain, even with the gain lower down. Now this is with the middle slightly up, treble slightly up, bass slightly down. So let's 12 o'clock them and give you the gain at 12 o'clock with this uh, humbucker strap. Should just mention at this point that the cab is mic'd up with a Shure 545, which is essentially an SM57, but just kind of older, and a Voodoo ribbon from SE Electronics, which is just a little bit more thick and fat and full and warm. The two of them are mixed together so that we get a, a nice all-round, slightly in-your-face, but also more accurate representation of the amp. And <laughs> That's a pretty good crunchy sound to me. Now, what gets interesting is when we get to gain two. Because we already get lots more. Lots of gain. Now, there's an effects loop, there's a noise gate in it, but that's turned off on a switch, which means if you've got things like noise gates in your loops and they're not switchable remotely, now they are. 
which makes things uh, much easier to control. So things like delays, reverbs, anything you have in the effects loop. Uh, it's all controllable by classic foot switches on the back or by MIDI. So any of these uh, switches have got off, on, or a setting in the middle. And the setting in the middle means let the foot switch do the thing rather than you can force it either way, even if there's a, a MIDI signal or a foot switch assigned to it, which means that in a pinch, that's really useful. Uh, but also the fact that you can just have them yeah, on off, that's cool too. There are two master volumes. I'm not going to be using two master volumes really in the studio, but for live, that means you could have kind of a volume kick and then go from to and back for whatever it is that you do. And it sounds like they work identically. So you can choose to have a solo boost set that doesn't affect the actual gain, just brings your level up. Always useful for a show. The sound of the second game channel is very distinctive. It is somewhere in between, I think, a 5150 and a Marshall E type sound. So it's got that bite, but it's also got that fullness. So even with this guitar, which is relatively low output humbuckers, on game two, I can get some big sounds. <laughs> So yeah, big sounds there. Uh, if I switch this back to the other guitar, which is in drop B, I'll be able to show you the other feature, which is preamp focus. So this guitar has uh, the Devon Townsend Fishman Fluence set, and it's down tuned to drop B. So we get this big fat. <laughs> Big sound, but that's on the bridge pickup. And that's, if we turn the bass down, that doesn't really affect the way the input is, which means that it's slightly flubby, slightly ill-defined. That's where the preamp focus comes in. We turn on the preamp focus, which again can be foot switchable. And it's kind of like having an inbuilt tube screamer. So suddenly the low end will be much more clear. Very much tighter. Now I do have a tube screamer up here on the, the rack on top of the, the head. Didn't end up using it because the preamp focus did the job in the song that I just did perfectly well. So there you go. The 100 watts I'm sure you can hear rather than the 50 watt head gives you a bit more of that thump, thump, thump thing. <laughs> which makes for some very, very big tones. And this amp, by the way, is on loan to me from John Brown from Monuments. I've loaned him a load of my amps while he's recording uh, album number four for Monuments. Uh, so yeah, thanks John for lending me this. Uh, thanks Victory, who I worked with with two notes to produce the cabs to give me this two by 12, which is kind of being used as a table and the four by 12, which is providing the tone, which is a massive, massive sound. So thanks to Victory. Thanks to John Brown, and thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Hey, everyone. That might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hop Pole Studios. See you there.